Premier Ministre. Well, Mr. Speaker, uh, thank you very much. I rise in the House today to discuss this government's plan to legalize and strictly regulate cannabis in Canada. <coughs> Bill C-45, the Cannabis Act, was put forward by this government to confront and address the realities of cannabis use in our country. It happens, Mr. Speaker. And Canadians are some of the most avid users of cannabis in the entire world. In 2015, 21% of those aged 15 to 19 used cannabis regularly. The number was 30% for those aged 20 to 24. It's accessible to our children, it's available in schools, and it funds major organized crime to the tune of billions of dollars per year. Clearly, Mr. Speaker, the current approach is outdated, it's archaic, and it just doesn't work. Over the years, Mr. Speaker, the Government of Canada's approach to cannabis use devolved into harsh mandatory minimums and unfair criminal justice practices. The reality we have found ourselves in does not match the policies that previous governments have enacted. I'm proud to rise to share with my honourable colleagues in the House and to my constituents in Vaudreuil-Soulange why the Cannabis Act is the plan we need now to build a safer and better Canada. We need a new approach, Mr. Speaker, one that takes care of our children and punishes organized criminals rather than everyday Canadians. The Cannabis Act revamps the Government of Canada's policies in three key ways to legalize and strictly regulate cannabis use in Canada. First, Mr. Speaker, we're going to prioritize working with the territories and provinces as equal partners to reforming the current cannabis regime in Canada. This work is well underway, and it has been for quite some time now. Second, we're going to address the simple fact that cannabis is accessible to Canadian teenagers whether we like it or not. Third, we're going to take billions of dollars out of the pockets of organized criminals and gangs. Each of these pillars is critical for my community of Audrey Soulange, where thousands of new families settle each and every year, making it one of the fastest ridings, uh, growing ridings in the country, Mr. Speaker. But they also apply from coast to coast to coast and work to address challenges we face with our provincial and territorial partners. Our aim, Mr. Speaker, is to set a framework that the provinces and territories can expand on in ways that best suit them. Our plan will succeed, Mr. Speaker, because the Cannabis Act works with our partners while safeguarding the underlying principles of protecting our youth and keeping money out of the hands of criminals. Working with our provincial partners, Mr. Speaker, and in particular for my community of audreuil soulange the government of Quebec, is the cornerstone of this new approach. Last week, the Quebec government's cannabis legislation was tabled in the National Assembly. Their legislation is complementary to the partnership we have established to ensure safety and security for our young people and for our communities, Mr. Speaker. In Quebec, the government will be creating the Société Québécoise du Cannabis, a parallel body to the Société de l'Alcohol du Québec. This model has worked in Quebec to support alcohol regulation and I am confident that our partners will get the needs of Quebecers right in cannabis legalization as well. Mr. Speaker, the strict regulation of cannabis under the Cannabis Act is designed first and foremost to protect Canada's young people. This is particularly important to me as Parliamentary Secretary to the Prime Minister for Youth and also as a father of two young children. It's also a priority for the young families that choose to call my community of vaudreuil soulange home. Mr. Speaker, I'm sure that you will agree, and all others in this House will agree, that we owe it to them to get this right, and the Cannabis Act does not compromise on keeping Canadians safe, particularly young Canadians, Mr. Speaker. First and foremost, we're setting a national be benchmark for legal age to purchase and consume cannabis at 18 years of age. The Government of Quebec set the same age with their legislation last week. But, Mr. Speaker, we won't be punishing our teenagers for possessing up to five grams of cannabis. Instead, we're setting harsher penalties of up to 14 years in jail for selling or giving cannabis to youth or using young people to commit cannabis-related crimes. L'opinion du gouvernement, Monsieur le Président, abuser des jeunes à travers les réseaux illégaux de trafic de drogue est le véritable crime. C'est un point de vue qui est approuvé, je crois, par mes collègues des deux côtés de cette Chambre et au sein même des provinces et territoires. Deuxièmement, nous devons nous assurer que les jeunes Canadiens 
comprend les dangers et les impacts potentiels de l'usage du cannabis. En octobre, nous avons, nous, nous avons annoncé un total de 46 millions de dollars sur cinq ans pour éduquer la jeunesse canadienne sur les réalités de la consommation du cannabis. En soutenant des campagnes à grande échelle qui visent à informer et à éduquer les Canadiens, nous créons un environnement sensibilisé sur les risques de cette consommation. Une partie de notre plan a déjà permis la distribution de 114 000 brochures par les cannabis, en partenariat avec Jeunesse sans drogue Canada. Le 10 novembre dernier, nous avons organisé, M. le Président, à travers Santé Canada, un symposium pour les partenaires sur l'éducation et la sensibilisation du public au sujet du cannabis, réunissant à Ottawa des acteurs de tous les milieux pour mieux identifier les opportunités d'action. Ces mesures, M. le Président, concrètes, sont la preuve de notre engagement à prioriser la santé et les risques liés à la sécurité, avec une étude des faits et un politique fondé sur les données factuelles, et pas, M. le Président, sur la peur et la désinformation. Ceci inclut l'interdiction d'utiliser des emballages ou des étiquettes attrayantes, de la publicité ou toute autre tentative qui encourage les jeunes Canadiens à consommer du cannabis. Ce projet de loi devant la Chambre imposerait des pénalités ayant jusqu'à 5 millions de dollars en amende, trois ans d'emprisonnement ou les deux pour les distributeurs qui agiraient contre ces réglementations. En fixant des normes nationales pour répondre aux défis de l'utilisation répandue du cannabis du Canada, nous prenons des mesures justes pour protéger les jeunes Canadiens sans pour autant punir le tiers des adultes qui utilisent le cannabis à des fins récréatives, M. le Président. À la place, notre gouvernement vise à protéger la jeunesse en concentrant nos efforts sur les crimes organisés et sur ceux qui fournissent le cannabis aux plus jeunes, malgré les risques sanitaires associés en consommation à un jeune âge. En fixant des pas très sévères pour la vente de cannabis aux jeunes, M. le Président, ce gouvernement envoie un message clair sur notre engagement inconditionnel à veiller d'abord à leur santé, à leur sécurité. Chez nous, M. le Président, à votre soulange, au Québec et partout à travers le pays. Et c'est quelque chose que tous les Canadiens peuvent appuyer. Les Canadiens, M. le Président, savent aussi que nous devons faire tout ce qui est nécessaire pour éviter que l'argent finisse entre les mains des criminels et du crime organisé. La loi sur le cannabis rend nos rues plus sécuritaires en générant une offre légale, contrôlée et sécuritaire de cannabis, disponible pour tous les Canadiens qui ont atteint la majorité. C-45, M. le Président, établit un cadre pour le commerce en ligne ou en personne. Il permet aux Canadiens un accès au cannabis en dehors du marché noir. Le projet de loi donne aussi au gouvernement la capacité de fixer un impôt raisonnable et compétitif qui viendra directement concurrencer les prix actuels sur le marché noir. Nous nous assurons aussi, M. le Président, que ceux qui souhaitent continuer à vendre le cannabis à dehors des marchés réglementés vont avoir des sanctions, selon la gravité de l'infraction, des amendes à un maximum de 14 ans d'emprisonnement. Cette approche, M. le Président, permettra à ce gouvernement de demeurer flexible tout en agissant pour contrer les délinquants les plus difficiles. Monsieur le Président, la loi sur le cannabis garde notre jeunesse en sécurité et permettra de garder l'argent loin des poches des criminels à travers un système de vente strictement réglementé au Canada. Notre gouvernement, Monsieur le Président, met sur pied un cadre pour nos partenaires provinciaux et territoriaux de manière à ce que le travail soit représentatif des volontés et des préoccupations des gens. Et Monsieur le Président, je suis fier de faire partie d'un plan qui priorise la protection des jeunes Canadiens à travers des pains et des sanctions rigoureuses pour ceux qui offrent un accès au cannabis à des jeunes. Un plan qui met en place des mesures concrètes pour renseigner les jeunes Canadiens sur les dangers de l'usage du cannabis. Et je suis fier de contribuer à un plan qui, au final, 
recherche des décisions basées sur des données factuelles et sur la réalité à laquelle nous faisons face actuellement. Audrey Soulange, au Québec et bien sûr au Canada. Mr. Speaker, I am proud to be uh, part of a government that is taking action to address a problem that has existed for far too long, Mr. Speaker. It's a problem that has literally existed for decades, and yet previous governments have just made the decision to continue with the status quo. We knew for, full well, Mr. Speaker, that the rates were high. Uh, in some cases, depending on the age group, they were going up, but previous governments did nothing. We knew, Mr. Speaker, that those that were smoking marijuana, almost one-third in some cases, or even more than one-third in some cases in certain age groups, were getting a product off of organized criminals and drug dealers, a product, Mr. Speaker, that they had no idea what it had been laced with, a product that they knew possibly could have been laced with something that was more detrimental to their health. And yet they had no other option because governments turned a blind eye to the realities of a failing system. We knew, Mr. Speaker, that the system that existed for the last 10 years, even longer, decades, Mr. Speaker, was putting billions of dollars into the pockets of organized crime. And I can say, Mr. Speaker, with a good amount of authority, and I think I speak on behalf of uh, my caucus members from Quebec, that this had a serious impact in violence and violent crime in my home province of Quebec. Uh, for those of us who are from Quebec or for those who have been following uh, violent crime related to organized criminal activities in Quebec. We know, Mr. Speaker, that there have been significant uh, rises and falls in crime relating to biker gangs, and the primary source of revenue for these gangs was the illicit sale of drugs. And yet, Mr. Speaker, for decades, this government, this House, this level of government, federal government, did absolutely nothing and still tried to convince Canadians that we were spending hundreds of millions of dollars on a system that was working when we knew full well that it wasn't working. We could have done better, and we should have done better, but it required courage to be able to do so. It required us looking back as to why we are all here as members of Parliament. We are here to put in place systems that work and use taxpayers' money effectively and yet, for decades, we haven't been doing that, and we've been trying to convince Canadians that we had the best possible plan in place, and that their hundreds of millions of dollars were being spent properly, and we knew full well that that wasn't the case. So what did we do, Mr. Speaker? Well, we first started off with being honest and open with Canadians that this is what we were going to do if we were elected, Mr. Speaker. Once we were elected, we followed through on that promise and started off with national consultations, Mr. Speaker. Whether it was the committees that were meeting and bringing in experts on all sides to talk about how we can best do this, studying how there are other jurisdictions in the United States and around the world that have seen a better a success rate in the systems that they had in place, whether it was myself as a member of parliament or other members of parliament from all sides of this house going across the country and hosting town halls, and asking for feedback from our fellow constituents, we worked hard over the last two years to reach out to Canadians, to reach out to experts in various fields, make sure that we were getting the information to get this right. Second, Mr. Speaker, we looked at all the data that was in place. And there have been a lot of studies that have been put forward, talking about health benefits, talking about other systems that worked better. And we also, Mr. Speaker, because of that data, because other jurisdictions had had the courage to try something new, we were able to look, Mr. Speaker, at those jurisdictions and say, you know what? They have reduced rates of cannabis youth among, uh, rates amongst their youth, Mr. Speaker. They have reduced violent crime related to organized criminals and street gangs. They have ensured that money is no longer going into the pockets of organized criminals. They've managed to do things, Mr. Speaker, because they were brave enough to try something new. And because they tried something new, we're able to look at those jurisdictions, Mr. Speaker, and say, what could possibly work in a Canadian context, Mr. Speaker? Third, Mr. Speaker, we've been working with our provincial and territorial counterparts to make sure that there is a robust dialogue with them. 
Now, Mr. Speaker, uh, more than ever, we're actually working with also our municipal counterparts and having a dialogue with our municipal counterparts to make sure that this is, on all levels of government, something that we will succeed in doing because we're working at it together in the hopes, Mr. Speaker, that we're going to reduce the rate of consumption and use of cannabis by our youth, Mr. Speaker, that those who do use cannabis regularly are getting a product that is safer for them to consume, Mr. Speaker, that is regulated, and, Mr. Speaker, that we are ensuring that we're taking money out of the hands of uh, organized crime. And fourth, Mr. Speaker, we are ensuring that we are providing funding where it is necessary. Over $40 million for an educational campaign at the federal level to ensure that we are educating young Canadians on the negative effects of cannabis youth use. This is not a, a projet de loi. This isn't a law, Mr. Speaker, that looks to encourage young people to start smoking. This is a law that we are putting forward in our hopes to reduce use amongst youth. And part of that is $40 million plus in an educational campaign to make sure that we are doing everything we can to educate young Canadians on the fact that cannabis is not something that you should be using and that there are health effects that could be negative for you, particularly as a youth, as your brain is still developing. And so we're putting our money where our mouth is, Mr. Speaker, because we know that that is a necessary step in putting this law forward. And Mr. Speaker, we're also putting forward over $80 million to provide support to law enforcement across the country and give them the tools to be able to, A, better understand how to detect those that are driving under the influence of cannabis, Mr. Speaker. Um, something that is incredibly important because guess what? Whether or not we want to admit it in this House, there are already people that are driving under the influence of cannabis, and yet very little has been done, particularly by the previous government, who did very little and turned a blind eye and said, you know what, let's leave it up to law enforcement to try and figure it out on their own, knowing full well that a problem already existed, Mr. Speaker, and that those law enforcement agencies could have used additional funding to be able to better train law enforcement officials and put in place um, systems that uh, would be better at ensuring that we're finding out who is driving under the influence, Mr. Speaker, uh, and uh, taking appropriate action. And also, Mr. Speaker, that money is going to go towards providing with the tools necessary to be able to test these individuals for driving under the influence. And Mr. Speaker, I appreciate you giving me the sign there that I have about a minute left. I just want to end off by saying this. I didn't come to this House, and I know I speak for many of us who were elected in the elections of October 2015 to do easy work. I came here to solve problems, particularly ones that have been plaguing Canada and Canadians for far too long. And I say that, and I say it with all sincerity, and I know I share this with young fathers and mothers in this House, or even those who have older children. We need to make decisions now that are going to positively affect them later on and not leave it up to the next government. Regardless how difficult those decisions are, not leave it up to the next government but instead make those tough decisions now. And my hope is that my three-year-old son, Anderson, my one-year-old daughter, Ellie, when they're at the age when they're going to high school, they have a harder time accessing cannabis, that they have an educational system and a campaign in place at all levels of government that don't turn a blind eye to the fact that it is easier to get marijuana on a high school campus than it is to get cigarettes and we're actually taking action. That's the kind of legacy that I want to leave for my kids, and that's the kind of legacy that I want to leave for future generations of young Canadians. And with that, Mr. Speaker, I want to thank you, and I want to encourage all members of this House, regardless of which aisle they sit on, to vote in favour of C45, and let's take the next necessary steps in protecting our young people. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Question.